Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country. This is episode number 16 and today we are returning with the second episode of the brand new season. We'll play one game today, possibly two, not too sure yet, we'll see how we're feeling. And also hopefully one, two or possibly three more signings with Palermo as well. So lots to get through today, let's just get straight to it. Some of you guys have been asking me as well, by the way, when I when I uh, put my hand up for free, uh, I do it like this and not how most people do it like that. This feels really uncomfortable to me and I find it hard to flex the ring finger. I don't know why, bizarre, but I am weird as you guys know. But um, yeah, so today uh, we'll definitely play the Genoa game, possibly Roma in a Serie A opener. We'll see how we're feeling, but uh, definitely for sure, we need to make some signings today. Obviously in the last episode we bought Capone to start a new season, that's good, but we need more than that. We've got £9 million left in our budget and after the Coronado transfer talks broke down in the last episode, I was fuming. Fuming! Um, so yeah, uh, hopefully we'll make one or two more signings today. But also, to start off with a transfer for Beluski here, uh, Chavez want to take him for 1.7 mil. Second bit we had for our centre-back here. And whilst he's not part of our long-term plans, we just don't have the squad to let this guy go. So of course he's going nowhere and uh, he stays with us. Now as for the new signings, obviously in the last episode we did buy Capone, as I mentioned briefly there. But that was it. Uh, we still got £9 million left. I'm not entirely sure what we can do because right now there are some players on our shortlist that we could try and buy but not many of which are going to really improve this team in terms of squad depth we've not got much of it but uh, at the moment the players we could buy for the resis aren't really much of a step up on the current players we have we were thinking about this guy last episode uh, lorenzo venuti but i'm not too sure yet as i do like fabio rossi but this is someone i am quite keen on rolando uh, mandragora uh, from juventus uh, central midfielder can also play center back as well and that's why i like the look of this guy his wages are quite high it'll probably cost around six million but if he can play center back that's really useful and with medium high work rates as well this guy could be a very very good little ball playing centre back for us in this team. I really do like those technical stats. He looks like a really comfortable player on the ball. And again, as we have Bonnie Fazzi at centre back alongside Beluski, I do want a younger centre back to pair with Bonnie Fazzi since Mariani seems like he's going to be stuck at 15 years old forever. So I'm going to put in a bid for Mandragora first. This will probably cost around half our budget, but we need some new centre backs in this team. Okay, so I tried to swap the Coronado. That was not going to happen, obviously. Um, so we're going to put in a straight valuation bid of 3.5 mil which would be a good fee to pay for uh, for Manjagora but I'm a little bit worried they're going to ask for a lot more than that um no they're not excellent stuff what a start to today's episode they're totally fine with evaluation bid and as I always say this is why I always encourage evaluation bid right from the beginning because you just never know if they'd accept it or not so that's a really good fee accepted there now let's offer a contract and see what he says all right so here's the problem then uh, we've agreed on three components in the contract important squad role five-year contract no release clause I was thinking yes we're loving life but unfortunately Rolando wants a wage increase of nine and a half grand plus two big bonuses as well man oh man oh man that is really frustrating um because he's going to be our highest earner by quite some distance here and at 71 overall he's not even that good but I feel like we sort of need to have someone like this into the club now. We need someone that can be quite versatile in a small squad and also someone to improve our defense as well. We're going to remove that bonus uh, and we're just going to go ahead and offer him what he asked for there. 48 grand a week and a 630 grand sign-on bonus. Palermo really can't afford to be paying this sort of cash and he wants even more money, but it's almost 50 grand a week for Mandragora. But I think this kid's got some decent talent and I think he's got some decent potential as well. So we'll accept it. Our first signing today it certainly is more than we planned for originally we will meet those wage demands reluctantly and get Manjagar in the squad hopefully it'll prove to be worth the money I mean don't get me wrong we do need to improve that center back role right now because we've not got the greatest amount of depth in that role and uh, whilst Manjagor is a central midfielder the fact he can play center back and is left footed as well with medium high work rate and is six foot plus means this guy could be a very very good ball playing center back on this team we are a passing team you see that in the 4 one 2 one 2 narrow we like to keep the ball on the ground retain possession and work through the middle so I think Manjagora really is ideally the exact type of player we were looking for so whilst we might have spent a little bit over the odds in terms of the salary the transfer fee was valuation that's quite cheap he's got 80 strength already 78 stamina I've got to say I'm, I'm annoyed at the wages we've had to pay to bring this guy in but I think he's probably ideally the right type of player we were looking for so Rolando in and that in my opinion is a, a tough signing to make but a necessary one look at what is done to our transfer budget though oh man it's gone it's basically gone we've got 2.5 mil left we're around 16 grand in the wage budget right now 
Oh, Rolando, why didn't you want to take a pay cut? Why did you ask for a pay increase, mate? Seriously, like, the fact that he's on a five-year deal with no release clause is great, though, because it means that in about two or three years' time, we won't have to go ahead and, uh, and, and offer him a new contract in order to keep him here. But... That's still a really expensive signing, and he better be worth the money. And it's, you know, I would not have made that signing had Mariani been... Oh, he's 16 years old now. I was going to say, I wouldn't have made that signing if Mariani was 16 years old. And he is 16. When did he turn 16? He must have literally just turned 16. Because he wasn't 16 in our last Youth School Monthly Report. Oh, my God. Like, seriously, we had such a bad start to the season in the last episode. It's getting worse. And, and now I can't blame anyone but myself. I've spent so much money on that new centre-back, and I could have signed a player who's admittedly worse right now, but probably has a lot more potential and is six foot four. Oh my god. Well, to be fair, to be fair, he can also play centre mid as well, and he's still a very decent player. Look, I'm not I'm not gonna get angry. I'm not gonna get angry. I've made a stupid error there. He wasn't 16 in the last episode. Right, let's find out his potential. Oh god, well, that is perfect. Absolutely perfect. Has potential to be special. Six foot four, left footed player, medium high work rate. Let's see his skills and weak foot. Three star, two star, that's totally fine on the centre back. Oh, oh, look at that. 77 aggression already. 75 jumping already as well. Absolutely love that on a 16-year-old uh, centre-back. We've already some decent centre-back uh, centre -back stats there. Stand tackle 63. And um, you can't... Oh, they're marking 48? Really? On a centre-back? Okay, well, we'll, we'll try and improve that. But I tell you, man... Honestly, I wouldn't have signed Mandragori had I, Mandragori had I known that uh, Mariani was waiting in the wings like that. Oh, I'm such an idiot. So I'm very pleased to see Mariani does have potential to be special. Though. That is exactly what we needed. And uh, I'm really pleased with that. But right now, with very little money remaining in our budget, what are we going to do? There are so few players we could sign. Do we want to bring back Monacello for this season? I'm not sure. Gitano Monacello. We really liked him last season, but at 24 years old, he's still going to get better, but how much better is the question at 69 rated? Um, I think we'll leave Monacello for now, but uh, we'll still have him on our shortlist, but I'm not, I'm not really sure who else we can sign, really. Marco Melli on Paragini for wingers. We've got enough wingers in depth here. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll just advance through the calendar and uh, see if we can sell Coronado. We need to get Coronado out of this club. See, the thing is, I don't want to release Igor. I really, really don't because he is worth around four million pounds. And like that, that is really useful for Palermo. That will be really, really useful for us. Um, oh, Mariani looks like a boss, doesn't he? He looks like a really confident young man. I love the haircut, young man. I really, really do. Oh, Mariani, I'll tell you. Like, I'm glad we just signed Rolando, no matter how much he cost us, but... I want to use this guy in the first team. What do we do this season now? Because we're not going to drop Bonnie Fazzi after last year's heroics in our back line. How do we, how do we choose our centre backs this year? Is Mariani going to be bled into the first team? Does he go straight in? I want to play him, but if we do play him, then Manjagora on nearly fifty grand a week goes on the bench. Oh, I don't know what to do. We desperately need another bid for Coronado, man, because like, I don't want to release him and have to pay money. So to get rid of a player that could generate money for us. Come on, two emails here. What? Yes! One bid for Coronado. It's a... Sorry, that might be quite loud there. A uh, bid for Maggiore uh, from Salerno, or Maggiore, which we are going to reject, because um, this guy's got some decent potential in our central midfield role. But a bid for Coronado here. Kiova Verona want to take him for £4.8 million. And that's more than the bid we had from... Oh, no, it's not. It's the same bid as the ones we had from Genoa. Right, Igor, this is the time you say yes, okay? We have no use for you here. You're very unhappy. We need some money. So please, bruv, please get gone. Please leave. We need that money desperately. Yes, Coronado has gone. Oh, get in. So our final foreign player has left. He may not have gone to Genoa, who, interestingly enough, are our first opponents today. But Coronado has gone for £4.8 million. We get £3.5 million of that. Absolutely fantastic news. And as well, because we're now a week before the, uh, the start of the new season, we should have some more money as well for season ticket sales, don't we? In, uh, in the transactions. Okay, not yet. Do we get that soon? When do you get the, because uh, you get a tiny bit more money, like a week before the new season starts uh, for season tickets. Not a lot when you're uh, when you're a small club, admittedly so. But okay, well right now anyway, we've uh, we've got our budget increased to £6 million. Thank you, Coronado, for leaving at the second time of asking. 
and we have a little bit more money left in our budget right now. Okay, it's still not a lot of money. We still can't really afford to sign any decent players to our first team right now, but... If we do get a bit more in the season tickets and maybe make one more sale as well, we might be able to afford to sign one decent player. And uh, I, I do like the look, I must say, of this young lad, Venuti, at the right back role. He is quick. He's got some decent stats there with 86 stamina, very important on the fullback. I wouldn't mind signing him, but I'd prefer to sign the other right back, which is, uh, where is he? Uh, Calabria, who's gone to Hanover. But I'm not sure we'll have enough to afford him in our second season, even though he is the better player with much better stats. But Coronado's gone. We're grateful. Thank you, Igor. And, uh, and let's head into the first season on high. Get in. So first game today is indeed Genoa here in the Coppa Nazionale. Uh, and I'm not sure if I played the Roma game or not yet. I'm still undecided. But I am feeling a lot more confident going into this game and a lot more positive now after Mariani turning 16 and also seeing Coronado get sold. Uh, so this is our team for the game. Then 4-1-2-1-2 narrow. Cragno is in goals back for us. Atola, Rolando making his debut alongside Bonnie Fazi and Rispoli, our captain at right back. The midfield quad is Mergi at DM, Barreda and Meligoni, the CMs, with Capone to cam. And up top, Cuccione and Moise Keane. C'è un volto nuovo in campo oggi nel loro reparto di centrocampo. Giocatore che serve, almeno nelle intenzioni, nelle speranze, per fare il salto di qualità definitivo. Grande fiducia, grandi speranze. Vedremo come se la caverà. È stato annunciato come un grande colpo. Vedremo se sarà all'altezza delle aspettative. Di sicuro ha le qualità per fare bene con questa squadra. Sono certo che lo dimostrerà fin da subito. Captain, your ball in the air, son. Yes, well done, Rispoli. Final year of his contract this season, but I do want to keep him as uh, Melagoni's on the ball. Pokes it inside, Barela finds space and drills one in to the back of the net. And Palermo go a goal up 15 minutes in. And for Nicolo Barela as well. Well, he was our big money signing last season. Still our most expensive transfer with this club. And what a start to the new season. 1 0 Palermo, a brilliant finish. I think it was Melagoni with a lovely through ball into Barela who took his time and drilled it across the goalkeeper's body into the bottom corner with that left foot and into the back of the net. And that's what we want to see from our number 10 this year. You know, last season, a few goals for us, but wasn't really, I would say, justifying his price tag. This season, I wanted to score a few more goals in that CM area, get a few more assists as well, and prove he is worth all that money we spent on him last season. Great start, 1-0. Oh, and right away, he's in to win it back again. Barela's in the mood today, very aggressive, and he's around his man. What work from Nicolo Barela, and now Cutrone who's running through, it's Patrick Cutrone, it should have been two, he'll drop to Keane, he'll back it into play, but straight to a Genoa player, that's more like it from Barela, really aggressive star. Barela plays it through to Rispoli, lovely through ball, what a start for Nicola in this game. Captain lost the ball initially, but gets it back. Nice fake shot, takes it round one, takes it round two. Can he cross? Yes, he can. Into Gutrone, and the goalkeeper punches it clear. It's not fully dealt with, though. Headed back in, and Gutrone controls, but can't get a shot away. Cleared, straight to Mergia. He's got space to let fly. Oh, what a goal! Mergia with a lovely strike. It's 2 0 to Palermo just before the break. What an absolute thunderbolt! Well, they just about scrambled the ball away, you know, but the danger was not fully away, and I love this multi angle replay this year. I've only seen this twice since FIFA 18 came out but what a strike from our number four across the keeper's body again and once again he had no chance. 2-0 to the lads from Sicily and what a first half here at the Stadio Renzo Barbara. Well, our first half was good, second half has not started off that way. Seven minutes in but I've already surrendered possession three times in seven minutes as uh, Genoa go down his right hand side and there is Bonnie Faz with the interception the flag's up for offside anyway. You know if we play like this in the majority of our Serie A games this season, we will be fine. You know, the board have said it wants to finish a mid-table. Look, we will definitely do that if we play like this all season long. It's going to be tough to maintain this for an entire season. This is only the first competitive game, but we've played very well today. And uh, Barela and Mergia in particular have been excellent through the middle of our park. Barela through the gap to Mergia. Uh, Mergia. The goal scorer is linking up now. Now Capone on the ball, starting tonight. Gets inside, and that's why he did start tonight headed low fast. So good save with the goalkeeper, though, and eventually cleared. Again, he won't start our league games. I'll Stick true to the poll. You guys voted for Lofasa. He will start our league games. But Capone will get minutes this season. I like the look of him early. Oh, we're almost there. There might be one final chance here for a third goal. It's down Monte finds Fabio Rossi. Down left-hand side. Matt Lafar post is all alone. What a cross. And Melo Joey puts it in at the near post. What a cross from Fabio Rossi just off the bench. And it's Palermo 3, Genoa 0. And midfield today has been fantastic. Barela, Mergia and also Melo have all got goals. But for that goal... 
you got to credit the young left back for an amazing assist. I saw the man free there, peel off his man in the back stick, totally unmarked. But I did expect that sort of delivery from Rossi. That was unbelievable. 3-0 Palermo, and we are through to the next round. What a team performance. You know, we are a passing team. We are a team that likes to keep it on the ground. We're a team that likes to move the ball around, and therefore our midfield is so crucial to our team displays. And in this game, you saw exactly why that is the case. Melagioni, Mergia, and Barella all scoring goals as we get to win by three goals to nil. And we are in to the next round and totally deserved it as well. I'll tell you, man, I was fearful heading into the new season, especially after our low transfer budget. But that was a great display. And to be fair to Rolando, our new centre-back as well, he was brilliant at the back too, alongside Borny Fazzi. Maybe he is worth all that money. But for man to match, everyone deserves credit, really. But I uh, I think Melagioni, uh, uh, Mergia, and also Barella, uh, who scored our goals, deserve the most amount of credit in this team as they're all fantastic. And, uh, and what a win for Palermo. Stars, you mean to go on. That was absolutely brilliant. And now we've got the season ticket earnings in our budget. Budget. took a bit longer than I thought it did but finally it came uh, an extra 6.5 mil not all that goes into our budget but our budget now uh, is 8.8 .8 million pounds which is awesome news with wage budget alterations it's probably going to be around 8 million pounds I'd say around that and uh, that's great news so I think what we might do is try and make one more signing uh, before the episode ends again we've got around 8 million pounds to spend there's a few players on my shortlist I'd like to bring in, but we don't currently have the money. Patagna would be really good, but it looks like Villa might, uh, might get him instead. And uh, Calabria is someone I really like, but I'm not too sure we'll be able to afford him. And also Lazari as well, a young right midfielder. And whilst we don't play with, uh, with, with wingers and, and wide midfielders in this team, I think he'd be a good option uh, on the bench when we need an injection of pace. So maybe Lazari, maybe Calabria. Honestly, I'm, I'm not too sure. But uh, I, I do want to make someone. I, I do want to sign someone, I should say, to end today's episode off. Make it two signings today. And uh, I think we'll end there. Or maybe Venuti. We said we wouldn't mind uh, signing this guy. Maybe Venuti. I guess we'll see. Now, the first bid we're going to put in is for Davide Calabria. Uh, Milan, but now Hanover in the game. Valued at 7.5 mil. I doubt this deal is going to come off. Because unless they accept anything close to a valuation bid, uh, we won't be able to afford both the fee and his wages and presumably a bonus as well. We will start with a valuation bid to begin with though and just see what they say to it. And they want 9.9 .9 mil plus a 5 cent sell-on clause, which is over what we can afford. Um, but it's good to know they're not asking for an extortionate amount of money. We'll propose a new transfer fee of, let's go to, let's go to 8 million pounds. And what we'll do as well is we'll put in the, uh, the sell-on clause. We'll increase that. Uh, to 10% and see if they'll accept that. Probably not, but you never know. And uh, no, they want 9.5 mil now plus a 5% sell-on clause. Okay. So it's clearly not the sell-on clause that I'm bothered about, really. Is it? Okay, so we'll really go for, for, for broke with the sell-on clause here. 25% uh, plus a 7.5 mil deal, which is not going to get accepted, but it's the best we can do, really. And, um, oh! Oh, they accepted it. So a 25% sell-on clause plus 7.5 mil fee. That's a big sell clause. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Well, I mean, I went for broke, but uh, I'm not sure I probably should have gone that far. 25% um, <laughs> sell clause. That means that if we get a million for him, we'd have to give the the other. Uh, we'd have to give Hanover 250 grand. So if we if we earn let's say 20 million for the guy, we have to give them five million. I think I I think I probably shouldn't have gone with that much. A 25% sell on clause. That is nuts. I've never offered anything like that before. Um, but hey, listen, if this guy does come in, I highly doubt we want to sell him as he's already 75 rated at 21 years old. Now, the money he's asking for is quite expensive. 20.5 grand a week is nothing. We can definitely afford that. But the bonuses are a little bit bulky um, considering how, how little money we have left over now. 25%. So have you ever seen someone offer a 25 cent sell on clause? But at least it worked. Um, we're going to remove that bonus though. We're going to offer that deal right there and hope he accepts it. Please, Dabby, to come into the club. Okay, he only wants an extra 500k. Uh, 500 500k a week jesus he only wants an extra 500 quid a week that's totally fine with me and david calabria uh, welcome to the stadio renzo barbara you're never getting sold though now you're never leaving the club to use that 25 cent selling clause but i'll certainly take it though i'll certainly take it 7.5 million deal i'll certainly take that that's a good little sign in there oh man i did not expect that deal to uh, to be accepted i i went for broke and i was thinking nah they'll just reject it and say five cent selling clause and 10 million or something but no 25% sell on clause 
And um, again, we're never selling this guy. We're never selling. Imagine if we could get like, I don't know, uh, like 40 million for the guy. We'd have to give 10 million to Hanover of that money. But um, either way, I've got to say, man, I'm, I'm happy with that signing. I'm really, really happy with it. You know, I wanted a new fullback in this team because we've got no registered fullbacks here apart from Satola uh, and Rossi, the young, uh, the young academy graduate as well. And that means now that with Rispoli, uh, the captain, in his final year of his contract, we needed someone long term to fill in in that right back role. Fabio Rossi can play there, of course, as we know, uh, despite being left back in his listed position primarily. But I wanted to make a new signing in that role, give us some more depth. And Calabria has got some really great defensive stats. He looks really, really solid. And when going forward as well, he's got some good physical stats as well. 77 stamina, 81 acceleration, and 79 sprint speed. Yeah, I'm really happy with that signing. The question is now... Who is going to take the captain's armband in this team? Because Calabri is definitely going to be using the first 11. Who's going to take the captain's armband? It's gone to Bonnie Fazzi initially... But who should take the captain's armband in this team? I think that's something that you guys should decide. Who should take the captain's armband in this team now that Rispoli is going to drop to the bench? Let me know in the comment section down below. And uh, in fact, you know what? I'll do a poll for you guys. And uh, we'll end on this today. We'll play the Rome again in the next episode. Uh, who should take the captain's armband? I'll choose five options for you. Bonnie Fazzi definitely to begin with. Uh, we'll also have uh, Barela as well. Uh, I'll, I'll think of five in our first eleven right now. And you guys can decide the top right. So yeah, we'll end it there on a new signing. And uh, I've got to say, I'm very happy with that so that will end today's episode of club and country guys so big thank you for watching i really hope you have enjoyed it if you did enjoy today's episode then please do drop a like because likes are of course very much appreciated and it really helped channel out as well much love to each and every single one of you have a fantastic night tonight and i'll see you for the next episode of club and country featuring transfer deadline day and our first ever Serie A game very soon bye